Well, good morning. It's Wednesday, September 30th, the last day of September. Man, that's hard to believe. Where in the world did it go? But either way, we're going to begin it in the way that we always do, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to do something a little differently today. Normally, I end with the Bible passage that we focus on. Today, I'd like to begin with a passage from Galatians chapter 1, where Paul is writing to our brothers and sisters in Galatia um, about a concern that he has, a real deep concern about them being fooled. And what he writes in verses 11 and 12 is this. He says, I want you to know, brothers, that the gospel I preach is not something that man made up. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. You know, when I was a kid, my dad took my brother and I uh, to some man-made bluffs in Missouri. It was south of St. Louis, where I grew up. And I remember he just brought some chisels and some hammers, and he said, hey, we're going to go have a little fun today. So we hopped in the car, and we drove to these man-made bluffs, which were really on the side of the highway. Uh, the reason they were there is because they had actually been um, cleared away. There were hills that were being cleared away, opened up for the highways that were put in years before. But along these bluffs, you could see some different things. You could see all the different layers um, that were right there before your eyes. In fact, uh, we focus more so on the deepest layers. We went to the, uh, the deeper layers because my dad said on occasion you can find some fossils. I thought this was cool. We were going to be fossil hunters. And of course, in my mind, I was looking for dinosaur fossils, but that's not really what we were looking for. We were actually looking for things as simple as what you can see behind me. Uh, and we did find some from time to time. It was a lot of fun. Well, I kind of walked off a little bit from my dad, and I wasn't really too far from him, but I remember getting really, really excited because what I saw was this. I know it doesn't look like much probably on the screen behind me, but what you can see are these speckles of shiny gold-like uh, substances. And, and I thought I had discovered gold. I remember running to my dad saying, Dad, Dad, you gotta come and see what I discovered. I, I thought I was gonna be rich, whatever that meant at my young age. And what it turned out to be was not gold at all. Even though it shined like gold, even though it glistened like gold, even though it looked like gold, it wasn't gold at all. My dad laughed and he said, no, no, that's what we call pyrite. And I, I asked him, I said, what in the world is pyrite? And he said, son, that's what we call fool's gold. And that's what I had discovered, fool's gold. It looked like it to me, it seemed like it was to me, but it wasn't gold at all. Well, when, it talks about, when we talk about being fooled, uh, Paul is actually writing to the Galatians about not being fooled when it comes to the most important thing that we know here in this world. And this is what he writes earlier on in that first chapter. He says to the Galatians, I'm astonished that you're so quickly deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. You see, in our lives, as was the case with the Galatians, we hear all kinds of things. And folks, if you're like me and you spent some time watching that presidential debate last night, you heard all kinds of things. I don't care which candidate you think you're going to vote for. You were hearing all kinds of things. And what we're called to do is try to decipher who's telling the truth. And bottom line is, when I was watching, I didn't want to be fooled. I will be honest with you right now. I don't think I was. I pretty much was what I expected. And I don't have a lot of kind things to say for what I just witnessed. But the bottom line is this, that when it comes to our Christian lives, we're called not to be fooled by all the babble that's out there in this world, whether it's from uh, presidential candidates or anyone else, especially when it comes to our, our spiritual lives, when it comes to our lives in Christ. So I think it's always good to keep it plain and simple and remember what it is that is the truth the truth of the gospel, the gospel that saves. First and foremost, it's always about Jesus. It's the fact that Jesus came into this world as our King, as our Savior, to redeem us. And as a part of that, it means that he lived the perfect life on our behalf. And the reason he did that, because we're not perfect. We prove it every single day. I can sit here and, and ridicule and even mock the presidential debate. I could go so far to mock the candidates, 
but I'm no better. We have to confess that. We may think we are. We may think we handle things better, but sin is sin. We've all committed it. We've all fallen short. And Jesus came to live perfectly in our place. That's an amazing thing that he was willing to do that. Secondly, he then went even further to take on all that we deserve because of our sin. He went to the cross and died for us to rid us of that sin, to cover us with his forgiving and gracious blood. That's another great truth that we never let go of. And then, of course, it didn't stop there. Jesus then rose and conquered the grave. He conquered death, which means that we don't have to fear even physical death any longer. Because now, with all of this and all that Jesus has accomplished in forgiving us of all our sins, because of him, heaven awaits us all. That's a great truth. It's the only truth that never changes. And I pray you hold on to it today. I pray that you hold on to it tomorrow. I pray that you hold on to it when you're going in that election booth. Either way, remember who our true king is and remember what he's really done for all of us and don't be fooled by anything else. Let's go to him in prayer. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you came for people like us. We know we didn't deserve it, Lord. We know that we've clinged to so many lies and we've clinged to deceptions. We know that we have chased so many things that we should never chase. And we have not lived the lives that you have called us to live. But Lord, thank you so much that as our King and Savior, you revealed yourself to us in and through Jesus Christ. We thank, that, thank you, Lord, that you went to the cross for us, that you conquered the grave for us, and that you have... You have prepared a place for us in heaven, even though we didn't deserve it. Lord, help us to hold on to this truth and to not listen to the babble of this world so that we're not fooled. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you guys go and have a great day knowing the truth that Jesus loves you that much that he did all these things for you. And he did it on purpose. No fooling.